express my support for this resolution, and I know I speak for all my constituents in the, the 13th District of Illinois when I say that we share in the loss of our, our friends from Arizona and our thoughts and prayers are with their families at this difficult time. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from Arizona. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from Missouri, Mr. Clay. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the gentleman from Arizona for, for yielding, and I rise in support of this bipartisan resolution and to offer uh, my thoughts and prayers for the swift healing and complete recovery of my friend and colleague, Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. Uh, the, dedica the dedicated members of her staff who were also wounded and all of the other innocent victims of this unconscionable act of violence. I also want to express my sincere sympathies to the families of U.S. District Court Judge John Rowe, Gabe Zimmerman, a valued member of our congressional family, uh, Doran Stoddard, Dorothy Morris, Phyllis Snack, and most especially Christina Green, a remarkable nine-year-old child who had just won her first election uh, to the student council and wanted to speak to her congresswoman about a career in public service. Uh, Madam Speaker, as, you, uh, as, as Speaker Boehner so aptly noted just moments after this tragedy occurred, uh, an attack on one who serves is an attack on all who serve. And I would venture to say that all of us who have the high honor of serving in this body, the People's House, have searched our souls to try to understand the nature of this attack on the very core of our democracy. Like most of us, Congresswoman Giffords knows that there is simply no substitute for spending time with your constituents. The plain truth is that you cannot effectively represent your community in Congress unless you make time to interact with the people who hired you for this job. And as for me, I will continue to do that because I truly believe that even in the face of this kind of mindless violence, constituents have a right to question their members of Congress directly. And we who have been entrusted with the honor of public service must never allow fear or threats to undermine that fundamental principle. Gentleman yields back. The gentleman yields back. The reserve. Uh, the gentleman time. reserves his time. The gentleman from Arizona. I yield two minutes to the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Altmaier. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized for two minutes. On behalf of the 4th Congressional District of Western Pennsylvania, I rise to pay tribute and offer our deepest sympathy and condolence to the 20 victims of the tragedy in Tucson. And as a member of the class of 2006, I grew to know Gabby quite well, and we look forward to the day, hopefully very soon, when she will join us back here in this chamber. And I know her well enough to know that her first priority on a day like today would be to honor the 19 constituents who were taken and, and uh, affected by this tragedy, especially the six who lost their lives. So it is in that spirit that I honor, and we all honor in this chamber, 63-year-old U.S. District Judge John Roll, a Pittsburgh native, an active Catholic parishioner, nine-year-old Christina Green, Pennsylvania native, third grader who had already told her parents she was looking forward to a career in public service and attending college she hoped and said at Penn State. 30-year-old Gabe Zibberman, Gabrielle Staffer, newly engaged, master of social work, dedicated his life, his life to public service. 79-year-old Phyllis Schneck, New Jersey native, church volunteer, loved cooking and spending time with her family. 76-year-old Dorwin Stoddard, devout Christian, survivor of 17 heart stents, died saving the life of his wife, a grade school friend, and 76-year-old Dorothy Morris. We pay tribute to them all, and we thank them for their service to this country. And we will not let this attack 
deter us from carrying on the business of the American people and engaging in civil discourse in our representative democracy. Gentleman yields back. The gentleman Calif still reserves. Continue reserve. Continues to reserve his time. The gentleman from Arizona. Madam Speaker, I yield one minute to the gentleman from Montana. The gentleman. Or Washington, excuse me. From Washington. The, the distinguished the gentleman from Washington. The distinguished gentleman from Washington is recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, <clears throat> what does the Lord require? Do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. These words from the prophet Micah are as, as true today as they were when, when first spoken. They provide guidance to how we in Congress can lead by example for everyone in this country as we try to come, terms, to, come to terms with the tragedy in Arizona. We can work with each other with justice, with mercy and humility in our hearts. When Micah said these words, they were guidance. Today they are a plea. And I know that we can heed these words. Madam Speaker, I ask that we keep all the victims and their families of this tragedy in our prayers, and I especially ask that we keep Gabby in our hearts. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California. This time, Madam uh, Speaker, I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Colorado, Mr. Kaufman. The gentleman from Colorado is recognized for two minutes. Madam Speaker, I rise today in support of House Resolution 32. I had the opportunity to work with Representative Gabrielle Giffords over the last two years on the House Armed Services Committee, and I've always admired the gentle lady from Arizona for her dedication to her constituents and to our nation. This resolution before us today condemns in the strongest possible terms the horrific attack which occurred last Saturday in Tucson, Arizona. This resolution offers the heartfelt condolences to the families, friends, and loved ones of those who were killed in that attack. It expresses a hope for the rapid and complete recovery of those wounded in the shooting applauds the bravery and quick thinking exhibited by those who prevented the gunmen from potentially taking more lives. It recognizes the service of the first responders who raced to the scene and the health care professionals who tended to the victims. And this resolution stands firm in its belief in a democracy in which all can participate and in which intimidation and threats of violence cannot silence the voices of any American. This resolution honors the service and leadership of Representative Gabrielle Giffords, a distinguished member of this House, as she courageously fights to recover. Madam Speaker, when adjourning today, let us do so out of respect for the victims of this attack. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California continues to reserve. The gentleman from Arizona. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the distinguished gentlelady from Ohio. The gentlelady is recognized for two minutes. Madam Speaker, we know Gabrielle Giffords as a colleague and a friend, a member of her congressional class of 2006, the majority makers. She's an outstanding public servant whose sole and constant commitment to help make her district and our nation as great as it can be. The shooting that has left, left Gabby fighting to recover and that has claimed the lives of her outreach director, Gabe Zimmerman, and five other innocent victims was horrific and stunning. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Gabby, her husband Mark, and her family, and to all of the victims and their families. In recent days, the nation has learned much about Gabby and her commitment to kindness and service. We've learned also of other extraordinary Americans present on that day. We learned of Christina Taylor Greene, a child full of grace, born on 9-11, taken away far too soon, but who will be remembered always, not only by her beautiful family, but by a grieving nation which glimpsed her spirit, leaving her goodness impressed forever on our collective memory. America has learned of Gabe Zimmerman, a faithful public servant who used his life to make a difference in his country and for his community. And of Judge Roll, husband and father committed to justice and the rule of law. 
of Dorothy Morris, beloved wife of George Morris, who also was critically wounded as he tried to shield her from the bullet, and of Phyllis Schneck, a loving mother of three, beloved grandmother of seven, and of Dorwin Stoddard, who acted with great love in giving his life to save his wife. We remember these extraordinary people and the others who were injured, and we remember the heroes who came to the aid of fellow citizens, these ordinary yet great Americans reflecting the best of our nation and its citizenry. And we join together today to condemn this violent rampage, but let us also join together to express our appreciation for those who offer themselves up in service, like Gabby and Gabe and Judge Roll, and all who were there participating in our representative republic. Let us reach out one to another in common purpose. It's been said, God has not called us to see through each other, but to see each other through. Let it be so. Gentlelady's time has expired. The gentleman from California. Madam Speaker, at this time I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Goodluck. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized for two minutes. I thank the gentleman. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, I am shocked and saddened by the senseless act of violence that occurred Saturday against Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, her staff, and members of the Tucson community. Just two days before this horrific attack, Gabby joined me and many other members of Congress in reading aloud the U.S. Constitution on the House floor. It was my honor to yield to Gabby to read the First Amendment, and on Saturday, she and those participating in her Congress on the Corner event were exercising their First Amendment freedoms of free speech and to peaceably assemble. It is unconscionable that anyone would take violent action to deprive someone of their life or liberty. Our thoughts and prayers are with Gabby, her family, her staff, and others who were affected by Saturday's tragic events in Tucson. While this tragedy serves as an unfortunate reminder of evil actions, it must also remind us of the good people, the, of the good in people, as we hear the stories of the heroes of that day, people who gave their lives, uh, people who saved other lives. We as members of Congress cannot allow this senseless act of violence that occurred against Congresswoman Giffords to deter us from our jobs or deter the American people from exercising their precious freedoms. I read again the words that Ms. Gifford read on the floor on Thursday. Amendment 1, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Madam Speaker, I don't know if Ms. Gifford spoke on the floor after that. Those may have been the last words she uttered on the floor of the House. I join my colleagues in praying that we will see her again on this floor exercising her precious freedoms. And God bless her and all the victims of this tragedy. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Arizona. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from Utah. The gentleman from Utah is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. You know, on Saturday morning in Tucson, it started out in a very good way. It started out with a number of people who wanted to engage in one of the great American traditions. It's a tradition of our government, which is that we have a discussion of ideas. That's what America is about, a competition of ideas. And so we had Congresswoman Giffords, and we had her staff, and we had members of the community gather. That's a positive start to that day. And of course, that positive start was destroyed by the tragic acts that have been recounted by so many on the floor. We all stepped back in shock and horror and sadness at what took place in Tucson. It's an attack on the individuals that uh, clearly affects all their lives. It's also an attack on sort of what this country is about. It's important that as we hope and pray for the recovery of the victims, and we hope and pray for understanding for the families of the victims, and we mourn the loss of those who perished that day. It's important that we also recognize that there were great Americans who were there to exercise their right of assembly and have that great American tradition that represents what this government's all about, which is that we can sit down, we can have discussions, and we can disagree with each other. It's okay to disagree with each other. That's the strength of this country. That's the idea behind America, is that we have that opportunity to look for the best ideas from wherever they come. 
And when it comes to public service, it would be, it would be good for all of us to recognize the ideals of our colleague, Gabby Giffords, a good friend, a good colleague, someone who had all the right of motivations when she first got to Congress and continues to represent those motivations, someone who's smart, articulate, looking to solve problems, and someone who knew how to be passionate for her constituents. I think everybody in this well probably knows a story where Gabby talked to them about her constituents in Tucson and an issue that mattered to her. That's what uh, impresses me about Representative Giffords. It's a model that I think we could all remember and continue to follow as we do our best for our constituents. And so, Madam Speaker, I close by saying I wish all the best to the families, to the victims. Our thoughts and prayers are with them. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from California. Madam Speaker, at this time I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Duncan. The gentleman from South Carolina is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Let me uh, preface my remarks by saying that I barely know Gabby. As a freshman member of the House, I was sworn in last week with a lot of colleagues that I hope to get to know over the <clears throat> coming days. But I rise today in concert with my friends and colleagues on both sides of the aisle to express the sadness and grief that all in our country feel over the loss of life in Tucson this past weekend. The citizens of South Carolina mourn with our nation, and we lift up in prayer the families and friends of the victims in Arizona. Much of the coverage and attention has been centered around our wounded colleague, Gabby. My family and I join in praying for her healing and for the others who have been wounded. I also wanted to celebrate the lives of the six who were lost. Nine-year-old Christina Green, an inspiration to us all. Judge John Rowe, Congressional Staffer Gabrielle Zimmerman, Pastor Dorwin Stoddard, Dorothy Morris, and Phyllis Sheck. While we mourn their loss, we also remember what they meant to their families, to their friends, and to their communities. I join with all my fellow Americans in honoring their lives and in praying that God's comfort would rest upon their families. May God bless them as he may continue to bless America. I yield back the balance. The gentleman yields back, the gentleman from Arizona. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the Dean of the Congress, the distinguished gentleman from Michigan. The gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without Madam objection. Madam Speaker, I thank my dear friend for yielding me this time, and I rise as do all of my colleagues with sincere condolences to the families who lost loved ones in the horrific events of last Saturday. They were vic the victims amongst them were a young student, a number of congressional staff members, one of our dear friends and colleagues who has served with distinction and, and remarkable ability and grace, and, a, and an outstanding federal judge. During my career in Congress, I witnessed horrific events, the assassinations of President Kennedy and Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy. I've seen firsthand anger brought on by landmark life-changing legislation such as the Civil Rights Bill. Like other members, I've found the current state of affairs is also somewhat new to me. One of my colleagues, as we were going to the memorial service, observed to me that he had, as a judge, sent large numbers of people off to jail, but he had never been as concerned about his own personal safety and that of his family as he is today. Our founding fathers wanted our system of government to be a vigorous one, full of enthusiastic and vibrant debate. But I don't believe that they wanted to see the kind of debate and discussion that we're seeing both in this place and in other places of public assembly. I want to read a few of the statements that I've seen that I find to be pretty awful. Here's one. People are really looking towards those Second Amendment remedies and saying, my goodness, what can we do to turn this country around? I'll tell you the first thing we need to do is to take out blank. That's for the name of the person. Next one. I want people in blank armed and dangerous on this issue of energy tax because we need to fight back. I want to kill blank with a shovel. Every night I get down on my knees and pray blank will burst into flames. 
Our nation was founded on violence. The option is on the table. I don't think that we should ever remove anything from the table as it relates to our liberties and freedoms. Don't retreat, reload. A yield additional 30 seconds. Gentlemen, I thank the gentleman. 30 seconds. I would observe if you have seen, you saw the district of Gabriel Gifford had a crosshair put on it. As a lifetime rifleman and shooter, I know what crosshairs signify when you put them on somebody, and I know what happened. One other thing, if balance don't, ballots don't work, bullets will. So here we have a denigration of the great debate and the system of government of ours where threats are made. Members of this body and have a duty to speak out, as do members of the media who have been saying these kinds of things and leading us Expired. into a time when we create a threat, not just to the lives and well-being of our members, but also to the lives and the well-being of this country and its debates. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from California. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, you know my such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, um, last week, Gabby Gifford did speak the words of the First Amendment here on the floor, and they talked about uh, the right of citizens of the United States to come and plead their case to their members of Congress and to seek the redress of their grievances. And I think they, uh, our founding fathers anticipated that we would be involved in robust and vigorous debate, but they also hoped that we would utilize uh, some sense of civility as we did so. I'd like to read an um, email that I received in my office from a constituent that I think would bring a smile to the lips of um, Gabby Giffords and responds in some way to what the gentleman from Michigan has just said. And these are those words, Dear Representative Lundgren, I write to share with you my feelings upon hearing the news of the terrible shooting in Tucson, Arizona. I find I am overwhelmed by emotions. In the past, and I suspect in the future, I have disagreed with you on many of the political things that you have said and done. I have voted against you. I've even felt and expressed frustration and anger about you. I wish now to state that if unlikely circumstances arose and I were in a position to protect you from physical attack, I would do whatever I possibly could to preserve your safety and your person at whatever risk to myself. Our democracy and freedom cannot survive if elected officials feel threatened and find themselves having to consider their physical safety as they make the decisions and fill the responsibilities of office. Please continue to do your job as a member of Congress as best you can. I will continue to disagree with you when and as needed. I am just one man, but all of us citizens can only do what we can do. I, for one, will never threaten, encourage, or resort to any violence whatsoever while debating, disputing, or arguing politics. For whatever tiny weight I count for in this great sea of America, I want you to feel safe from any harm. Make your decisions and vote your votes in Congress. Please try and not be such an idiot Republican about it. And know that you are safe in the 3rd District for all of your life if I can have any say in the matter. Thanks for all the work that you do, most sincerely. That's a message that I know Gabby would want us to embrace and one that would not only give her resolve, but hopefully attract her sense of humor as well. I reserve the balance of my time. Reserves his time. The gentleman from Arizona. Madam Speaker, at this time I will yield two minutes to the gentlelady from Ohio. The gentlelady is recognized for two minutes. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Uh, Madam Speaker, it is with a heavy heart I stand today to support this resolution and to encourage Congresswoman Gabby, Gabby Giffords, her family, and all victims of the Arizona shooting. I am in prayer for their well-being, their healing, and their peace. Gabby and I served together on the Science and Technology Committee, and we lived in the same D.C. apartment building. I learned of her passion for people and for her commitment to service. In her honor, I call for a return to compassion 
and an abandonment of hate-laden rhetoric. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, returning violence for violence multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. If I could speak directly to the American people, I would ask them to combat this great darkness with love, not with fear. I would ask them to combat this great darkness with a tide of hope and faith and perseverance and to understand our unity. I thank you, Madam Speaker, and I yield back. General Lady yields back. The gentleman from California reserves his time. The gentleman from Arizona. Uh, Madam Speaker, I re yield two minutes to the gentleman from Missouri. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized for two minutes. Madam Speaker, I rise today to recognize and lift up in our prayers my friend and colleague from Arizona, Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, the dedicated public servants on her staff, and the citizens engaged in the most fundamental practice of our American democracy, meeting with their representatives at a Congress on Your Corner public event. In the aftermath of this horrific attack, we've learned a lot about the lives and actions of the victims and heroes of last Saturday they reflect the very best of America. Gabby not only spoke out regarding the importance of government by the people, but she lived it every day. Last week, I sat here on this floor of the House in line with Gabby and our colleagues as we read the U.S. Constitution. The section that she read from this very podium was the First Amendment that protects the right of the people to peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. I remember thinking to myself, what an ideal section for Gabby to read. Because of her great example of an, of an engaged public servant, truly being a representative that stays close to the people. This resolution before us today is necessary and appropriate, but by itself will not be long remembered. What will be remembered is our resolve, our unified national resolve to stand against extreme and divisive rhetoric and against building barriers between citizens and the representatives that would weaken our democracy and diminish our way of life. An attack on one citizen while engaging in our representative democracy is an attack on all citizens and the very foundation of our democracy. Let us resolve in honor of all the victims in Tucson that every representative and every citizen continue to meet on corners across America to work through our differences, to find common ground, and to make progress working together. To Gabby and every person impacted by this tragedy, we resolve today to always be in your corner. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California. Madam Speaker, at this time I'd like to uh, yield two minutes to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Latta. The gentleman from Ohio is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank the gentleman for yielding. I rise on this sad day to join my colleagues in recognizing the lives of those affected by the horrible tragedy in Tucson, Arizona this past weekend. As we reflect on this tragic event, the one thing that must be remembered is that our colleague from Arizona, Congresswoman Giffords, was simply doing her job, a job that she loves to do. Meeting with our constituents and providing with, the assistance, with assistance is the basic duty of any member of Congress. The best and only way for members of Congress to carry out our oaths is to be with, listen to, and see what our constituents are experiencing. The nameplate on the front of our office reads representative. And Congresswoman Giffords was doing just as we do day in and day out, representing our citizens at home and here in Washington. The loss of life and injury suffered by the victims will always be remembered by this body. Whether it was Federal Judge John Rowe, Gabe Zimmerman, Congressman Gifford's staff member, or nine-year-old Christina Taylor Green, all those who lost their lives or were injured will hold a special place in our hearts, thoughts, and prayers. We cannot let this act, random act of heinous violence deter us from our duty to serve our constituents 
and I know we will move forward together as a stronger, united House. Madam Speaker, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Arizona. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentlelady from Pennsylvania. The gentlelady from Pennsylvania is recognized for two minutes. Thank you. Last Saturday, in Tucson and across the country, so many Americans, including myself, were horrified and deeply saddened by the mass shootings at the congressional outreach event hosted by U.S. Representative Gabrielle Giffords. The senselessness, the violence, the magnitude of death and injury was stunning and alarming. It is a personal tragedy, it's a national tragedy, and it is heartbreaking and wrenching. Because we all share in the pride of our representative democracy, members reaching out to their constituents and constituents having the opportunity formally and informally to talk to their representative in Congress is at the core of our responsibilities and a value we all hold as Americans. So even as we mourn, as Americans, we cannot allow this to diminish or deter our civic interactions. I ask for my colleagues to join together in honoring those who were killed. My thoughts and my deepest sympathies are with them, with their loved ones. And to Gabby. Gabby is our colleague and she's our friend. I share in acknowledging and honoring her commitment to public service and her principled leadership on behalf of her constituents. She has a deep passion for who we are as Americans and for working to find that common ground to meet our nation's challenges. Her inner strength and determination and her good spirit all are serving her well as she struggles to recover from her wounds. Reports from her doctors have been remarkably positive. So my heartfelt thoughts and prayers are with Gabby and all those injured for swift and full recovery. And I extend those thoughts and prayers to her husband Mark and to um, all the families and friends of the victims, Gabby's staff, and to all those affected by this senseless shooting. I love this country deeply and the values we all share. It is my hope that our nation will come together to honor those who perished and to affirm our commitment to move forward in a way that allows us to voice our differences and debate the solutions to our challenges while respecting our shared love and dedication to our great nation. The gentlelady's time has expired. The gentleman from California. Madam Speaker, at this time I'd like to uh, yield two minutes to the gentleman from Arkansas, Mr. Griffin. The gentleman from Arkansas is recognized for two minutes. I thank the gentleman for yielding me time. Madam Speaker, I rise today in memory of the victims and in support of my colleague from Arizona, her staff, the loved ones of the victims, and those who brave, bravely and skillfully responded to the attack. My freshman colleagues and I have only been here for a few short days, but in Representative Giffords, we see the temperament and dedication needed to be good representatives of the people. She embodies these qualities and is an example for everyone here in the People's House. Let us not forget the personal side of this tragedy. Those lost include two dedicated public servants, a devoted great-grandmother and a loving wife, a heroic husband whose last action was protecting his wife, and a nine-year-old interested in public service. They will all be missed. In the wake of this tragedy, we find solace and we find power in prayer. My prayers are for the families of the victims, for the speedy recovery of Congresswoman Giffords and all others who were wounded. I pray for law enforcement investigating this cowardly attack. I pray for the medical workers, that their work heals those who have been injured. I pray for this House, its leaders, fellow members, and their staff. And I pray for our country, asking God for his blessings during this time of grief. This attack hits each of us in a personal way, but we must resolve to move forward, representing the men and women who sent us here to do our nation's work. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Arizona. Uh, Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from New Jersey. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized for two minutes. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, I rise to express my sincere condolences to the families of the victims of this senseless tragedy in the family of our colleague, Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. I hope and pray for a quick recovery. And to the people of the 8th Congressional District of Arizona, 
we uh, know what you're going through. The life of a nine-year-old who wanted to be a student council representative and was elected to that, Christian Taylor Green, federal judge John Rawl, father, grandfather, Phyllis Schneck, a former Jerseyite who still loved the New York Giants, who, as you may know, play in New Jersey, Gabriel Zimmerman, our commander of outreach, who did such a great job for her, and two 76-year-olders, Dorothy Morris and Darwin Stuttert, who shielded his wife so that she would live. I thank the leadership for bringing forth this resolution, first acknowledging the victims of the tragic shooting in Tucson, Arizona, and also condemning the act of violence, which was a product of hatred that threatens the democracy of this nation, in which we can all participate in with intimidation and threats of violence, cannot silence the voices of any American. Congresswoman Gifford, her staff members and constituents, we're ex exercising this very privilege on Saturday, Jan January the 8th, as well as the right to afford all of us under the First Amendment of the Constitution. It's ironic that gun violence has, throughout our history, uh, brought down leaders. Abraham Lincoln, 150 years ago, who said uh, all people should be free. Our President John F. Kennedy in 1960-ish uh, 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 during uh, that time, the, his brother Bobby Kennedy, 15 years later, Mahat Gandhi, who brought India uh, into independence, and Tom and Boya, Kenyan, who talked about a united uh, Africa, and to Dr. Uh, to Yitzhak Rabin, who, if he had lived, I think there would be peace in the Middle East, and of course, Dr. Martin Luther King. May I have 30 seconds? I'll yield additional 30 seconds. The gentleman is recognized for 30 seconds. And so as we think about the tragedy of so many outstanding Americans who have lost their lives, I implore each and every one of us to continue in the spirit of unity, support, and love that often overflows during tragic events. May we continue in such spirits to prevent further acts, for we all know that only love drives out hatred and only good drives out evil. I'll yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California. Madam Speaker, at this time I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Brady. The gentleman from Texas is recognized for two minutes. Madam Speaker, we gather here today to honor the victims and the heroes of the tragic shooting that took place in Arizona this past weekend. Gabby Giffords is one of the best this institution has to offer. I had the honor of working with her on NASA issues in support of human spaceflight. Gabby embodies the type of public servant many of us strive to be, smart, kind, and dedicated to fulfilling her duty representing her constituents. That's why she was holding a public meeting on the first weekend of the new session. I pray for her strong recovery and for her family and staff, and I look forward to working with her once more in this body. I think in the darkest moments in history, we also see the brightest stars, and those stars are the men who wrestled the gunman to the floor, the woman who kicked the magazine away, the loved ones who protected their spouses and children, the intern who had enough first aid training to put pressure on Gabby's head wound, and the first responders who responded to that scene, the medical teams that got most of the victims into the operating rooms in under 38 minutes. Gabby's staff so clearly reflects her character and leadership. Gabe Zimmerman lost his life fulfilling his duty, and two others were wounded. And we pray for their recovery for Gabe's family and friends in this time of tragedy. The efforts of our intern, Daniel Hernandez, may very well have saved Gabby's life, and we'll always be grateful for his quick actions. We also pray for the other victims of this unspeakable act of violence, for Christina Taylor, Dorothy Morris, Philip Schneck, Dorwin Stoddard, and Judge Roll. We pray for, their swift, for swift and fair justice for them as well. As we stand here today, Democrats and Republicans, we're steadfast in our determination to keep representing our constituents. We'll not let the tragic events in Tucson change the way we represent the people. We will instead look to Saturday's heroes as a reminder of the real strength that is America. As Americans, we know that adversity, however tragic, makes us stronger and brings us closer together. That's what Gabby would want. We look forward to the day we welcome her back to this chamber. God bless America and all her citizens hurting in the wake of this tragedy. I yield back. 
The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Arizona. Madam Speaker, at this time I would like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Arizona. The gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Thank the gentleman for uh, yielding. In the last few days, I've run into scores of people from my district, the 3rd District of Maryland, who have expressed their shock and their sadness at the events that occurred in Tucson last weekend. On their behalf and for myself, I want to express our deep condolences to the families of all those who were victimized by this tragedy. A word about Gabby Giffords, our colleague. She and I uh, came in together in the same class. We began in January of 2007. She is everything that a representative in this body should be. She's thoughtful, she's hardworking, she's compassionate, and to a fault, she is attentive to the concerns of her constituents. That's why she was there at that supermarket last Saturday. We pray for her speedy recovery. We pray for the recovery of all those who survived this terrible event. And we mourn the loss of those who perished. And we send our thoughts and prayers to their families. With that, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California. At this time, Madam Speaker, I would like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Washington, the former distinguished uh, sheriff of King County, Mr. Reichert. The gentleman from Washington is recognized for two minutes. Uh, I thank the gentleman. Uh, Madam Speaker, there are a few words that um, have touched me over the last few days that uh, I'd like to share. Uh, first, thankfulness, thoughtfulness, prayerfulness, patience, wisdom, and hope. And first, we should remember those who have lost loved ones. Keep them in your thoughts and prayers. They'll not need them just today, but they'll need them in the weeks, the months, and the years to come, a pain that will never, will never leave their hearts. Second, thankfulness. We sure thank God for Gabby's remarkable recovery and pray that her recovery continues in a speedy way and in a, in a way that causes her to uh, recover to the point where she can return to this house and work with us again. And I think of patience and wisdom, and I'm addressing the speaker, but asking the members of this body to think about patience and wisdom in a moment, because first of all, let's respect the investigation that's being conducted by the law enforcement officers across this country, the federal, local, and state agencies. Let's respect their continued efforts in, in uh, weeding through the information that they're gathering. Let's be patient when we think about legislation and laws that we might be passing that could inhibit that investigation or maybe even inhibit some of the freedoms that we today enjoy. Patience in allowing them to gather the needed information where we can base good decisions on building good laws that protect the citizens of this great nation. And lastly, hope. Hope, which is a thing we all hold near and dear to our hearts. Hope that this country continues to maintain its freedom. Hope in the American people. Hope that we can all stand together after this tragedy. If there is a silver lining in this tragedy, it is the hope and the strength and the trust that the people of this country can build together to keep this country free. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Arizona. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from New York. The gentleman from New York is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to first say I'm so proud of all of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle who have spoken today. Uh, Gabby has brought us all together as never before. I'm a good friend of Ga Gabby Giffords. She's a good friend of mine. I first met her when, before she ran for Congress when a mutual friend said to me, you want to meet this lady. She wants to run for Congress and wants some advice. Would you give it to her? I called Gabby. She called me back. We spoke. And she decided to run. And we've been good friends ever since. My colleagues have all said it today. Gabby is as kind and as sweet and as nice of a person you could ever meet. 
She's considerate. She's thoughtful. She's caring, smart, hardworking. It's hard to believe that anyone would want to harm her. She was doing what she always did, going out and service her constituents, helping her constituents, going out to shopping center. You know, I have another connection with Gabby. My son, Jonathan, attended the University of Arizona, just graduated this year, and she and I spoke very many times about Tucson. I've been to Tucson many, many times in these past five years. I've even shopped in the Safeway, tragically, where, where the gunman shot all the people, including Gabby. You know, Gabby said something to me this past August as we recessed. I've served as the chair of the Western Hemisphere Subcommittee of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and Gabby served on my subcommittee. And we talked about having a field hearing in Tucson. And when I said to her that let's try to do it in September or October of this year, she said to me, no, you know, the speech, the language has gotten very hostile, and people's attitudes toward Washington have been very hostile, and I don't really want to do anything that would, would show that I'm the Washington person. That's how bad the atmosphere is. I couldn't help but thinking of that when I heard about the shooting on Saturday. May I have an additional 30 seconds? I'll yield an additional 30 seconds. Gentlemen's recognized for 30 seconds. You know, in this country, we do our political discourse with ballots, not bullets. And although the assassin tried to murder a U.S. Congresswoman, he really was trying to stick a stake or murder American democracy. All of us on both sides of the aisle are not going to let him. We're going to continue to do what we've done before, going out in the street, meeting people, taking care, and helping our constituents. We're going to continue to attend town hall meetings and do the kinds of things that Gabby would want us to do. I look forward to Gabby returning here. I look forward to working with her again. Gabby Gifford is the be Giffords is the best America has to offer, and we honor her and all the other victims of the shooting today. Madam Speaker, at this time I'd yield two minutes to the gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Scalise. The gentleman from Louisiana is recognized for two minutes. Thank you. Madam Speaker, it is with a heavy heart today that I join my colleagues in paying respects to the victims of the senseless tragedy that took place last weekend in Arizona. I extend my prayers to the families of those who lost their lives, to the wounded and the recovering, and to our dear colleague, Gabby Giffords. Gabby is an energetic member of Congress who works and enjoys the treats of all of those she meets with decency and kindness. I was here with her just last week while we read the United States Congre uh, Constitution on the floor of this House. Gabby so eloquently read from that bedrock of our democracy, the First Amendment. In a direct reflection of her passion for interacting with those she represents, Gabby read of the established right of the people to peaceably assemble. All of those gathered in Tucson on Saturday were engaging in what should have been a peaceful activity that is absolutely fun fundamental to our form of government. Spending time with the gentle lady who, was so proud, who so proudly advocates on their behalf here in the United States House of Representatives. Among the fallen were Phyllis Schneck, a great grandmother, Dorothy Morris, a devoted wife, Gabe Zimmerman, a public servant, John Roll, an honorable judge, Christina Taylor Green, a nine year old girl who just wanted to learn more about government, and Dorwin Stoddard, a man who gave his life protecting and saving his wife. They are all in our thoughts and prayers. Our founding fathers made no mistake when they included the right to peaceably assemble among the first tenets of democracy. The inexplicable violence of last Saturday is a stark, tragic reminder that we must never waver in our steadfast support of the First Amendment and their precious freedoms it affords us every day. As our colleague Gabby and all of those directly affected by this tragedy continue to heal from Saturday's incomprehensible events, let us remember the victims and their loved ones in our thoughts and in our prayers and in our actions. As those of us here have known and as people all throughout the nation are witnessing, Gabby Giffords is a fighter. Let's keep in our prayers the hope that she once again joins us back here on the floor of this, the People's House. Thank you, and I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Arizona. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from Kentucky. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for two minutes. 
Uh, Madam Speaker, Congresswoman Gabby Giffords is one of the kindest, most thoughtful, and hardest working elected officials anywhere. It's a shame that it took a despicable act to shine this bright spotlight on Gabby. She is what virtually every American would say they want in a member of Congress. Smart, open, friendly, intellectually honest, and very brave. She cares passionately about all of her constituents and, as she was demonstrating on Saturday, what they think. Speaker Boehner was absolutely correct when he said an attack on one member of Congress is an attack on all. But Saturday's attack was more than an assault on a congresswoman. It was an attack on American democracy. Gabby was doing what her job title implied, listening to her constituents at an event set up like hundreds before, conducting the business essential to effective representation. Dozens of citizens were actively participating in our democracy, asking questions and expressing themselves. The attack on Giffords was an attack on them as well. Earth-shaking tragedies sometimes create the opportunity for our society to have a reasoned discussion on critically important issues that we often cannot have under normal circumstances. In the wake of catastrophe, our hope is that such a discussion can strengthen our democracy and help our nation emerge stronger. Responsibility for this weekend's shooting in Tucson rests solely on the shoulders of the madman who pulled the trigger. However, it is our responsibility as citizens in the world's strongest democracy, democracy to seriously consider the impact that the accessibility of high-capacity weapons and the increased vitriol of public dialogue have on impressionable or unstable individuals and our society as a whole. For all of the pain and agony caused by this tragedy, it could also be a turning point for the country. Already, leaders from across the political spectrum are discussing the vital need to turn down the rhetorical volume and dial back extremism for the sake of our nation. We all are praying for Gabby's recovery and for the families of those who were killed and wounded Saturday. Let each of us resolve to do all we can to protect our democracy from those who would deny and subvert it. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California. Madam Speaker, at this time I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Grimm. The gentleman from New York is recognized for two minutes. I thank the gentleman from California, Madam Speaker. I thank you for the opportunity to come to the House floor to honor the victims of the tragic shooting in Arizona. The six individuals killed and the 14 wounded, including Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, were victims of a heinous and despicable act of violence. On behalf of the constituents of the 13th District of New York, I want to extend my deepest sympathies to the victims, their families and friends, and to the staff of Congresswoman Giffords. We will continue to keep them in our thoughts and prayers. As we come together as a Congress and a country to mourn and reflect, I urge my colleagues not to lose sight of what we've been called here to do and what we are here to accomplish. Congresswoman Giffords was doing the exact thing I hope we will all continue to do, going out into her community and taking the time to meet with, to talk to, and most of all, to listen to her constituents. This is what keeps us connected to the heartbeat of our district. This is what allows us to effectively serve our constituents and our country. This is what democracy is all about. This is what we have been elected to do. Additionally, I implore my colleagues to resist the innate temptation to enact reactionary legislation or to call for extreme measures that could adversely impact the institution of the House of Representatives. Giving due respect to the Capitol Police and the FBI, we should allow them to do their job to thoroughly investigate and afford them the time to offer us recommendations for our safety and that of our staff and constituents. I hope that moving forward we will not let this incident create distance between ourselves and those we have been sent here to represent. We cannot let this senseless, this completely senseless act of violence keep us from serving our district as effectively as possible. As we move forward, let's remember that while we should remain, I ask for 30 seconds, we have the gentleman 30 seconds. The gentleman's recognized for 30 seconds. Let us remember that while we should remain aware of the danger around us, we cannot live in fear or isolate ourselves in a bubble. Today I mourn with my colleagues in the nation and will continue to pray for those lost 
and to pray for C Congresswoman Giffords and the others injured in the attack and that they will have a full and speedy recovery. Thank you. The gentleman yields back. I yield back. The gentleman from Arizona. M Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the distinguished gentleman from Michigan. The gentleman from Michigan is recognized for two minutes. Madam Speaker, it is with a heavy heart that I take to the floor of the House today to pay tribute to the fallen, but also to honor the heroes, to express grief in wake of tragedy, but also to express my heartfelt gratitude to those who showed incredible bravery in the face of evil. Madam Speaker, I come to the floor of the House today to honor my colleague and friend, Gabby Giffords, because I want every American to know that she exemplifies what every American wants to see in their member of Congress. The Gabby I know is smart and hardworking. The Gabby that Southern Arizona knows is personable and accessible. The Gabby we all know is dedicated and humble. Gabby takes her job representing Arizona seriously. She works hard to affect change on the issues that matter most to her Southern Arizona constituents. We both served on the Committee on Science and Technology in the last Congress, and I was privileged to be able to collaborate with Gabby on her signature issue, solar energy development. She worked tirelessly to create not only clean energy for America, but also new jobs for Americans. We are both residents of border states, about different borders, and I was proud to co-sponsor her legislation to help give businesses the tools necessary to enforce immigration standards. I admired her strong commitment to our national defense and her tireless dedication to the men and women who serve our country in uniform. But even more than her legislative prowess, it is her smile and friendly nature that makes her a beloved figure, here in the halls of Congress as well as in her home district. And we all pray for her speedy recovery. We also mourn the loss of those who were senselessly murdered while participating in the most fundamental democratic tradition, talking with the people who represent us. Victims like nine-year-old Christina Taylor, who was just elected to her student council. Christina attended Representative Griff Gifford's Congress on your corner event because she cared about her community and a neighbor thought she would enjoy it. But while this tragedy has extinguished lives of promise, it has also revealed some incredible heroes Today we stand shoulder and shoulder and pray for the speedy recovery of our friend and General the other Simon wounded expired. victims. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I yield additional 30 seconds. Gentlemen's recognized for 30 seconds. And I just say to all, God bless the victims and their families. God bless all those who are grieving. And God bless America. Yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California. This time, Madam Speaker, I'd like to yield two minutes to the distinguished gentleman from Texas, Dr. Burgess. The gentleman from Texas is recognized for two minutes. And I thank the gentleman for yielding. And, Speaker, I stand today in support of the resolution. I stand today in support of the victims of the devastating events of last Saturday. And I stand today in honor of one of our own, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. Congresswoman Giffords was the youngest woman elected to the Arizona State Senate and now at the federal level continues to serve the constituents of her hometown with enthusiasm and distinction. It was in this spirit of statesmanship that she participated in her Congress on Your Corner event at the grocery store in Tucson, Arizona. This event characterizes the Congresswoman's approach to her constituents. She recognizes the importance of remaining open to the people. Retail representation, absolutely necessary in order to fully grasp the extent of the needs and views of those she served. Congresswoman Giffords epitomizes the term public servant, understanding that she works for the people first, last, and always. Congresswoman Giffords was doing the work of the American people when her life was threatened, and after she recovers, I have no doubt that she will return with that same energy and determination. I look forward to working with her again. I had the opportunity to partner with her on the Congressional Motorcycle Caucus in support of motor motorcycle safety awareness, and I saw that energy and enthusiasm firsthand. One of our primary freedoms that our forefathers upheld was the right to life. After years of fighting on behalf of others, Congresswoman Giffords must now fight for her own life. And let us also remember the doctors and the nurses, the first responders, who played such a priv pivotal role in preventing an even greater loss of life last Saturday. I will keep Congresswoman Giffords and those who were injured and their families in my prayers. I also offer my deepest condolences to the families 
of Christina Taylor Green, U.S. District Judge John M. Roll, Gabe Zimmerman, Phyllis Sheck, Dorothy Morris, and Dorwood started. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Arizona. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the distinguished gentleman from New York. The gentleman from New York is recognized for two minutes. I thank my very good friend from uh, Arizona. Uh, Madam Speaker, the violence in Tucson and the shooting of my very good friend Gabby Giffords uh, is not a time for partisanship and it is not a time for politics. It is a time for reflection and I have three brief reflections to share with my colleagues. Uh, I knew Gabby pretty well. We weren't best friends, but we were good friends. Uh, I was with her and her husband Mark on the day that Mark proposed to her. We were in New York and Gabby and I had several events to do and Mark kept uh, asking uh, if uh, Gabby could leave early and I kept saying no and finally Mark said there is no choice, she's leaving early. I later learned that the reason that she had to leave these events early was uh, because Mark took her to the Merchant Marine Academy in Kings Point and proposed to her. Most of my constituents now know Gabby Giffords. Few know that uh, this important day in her life uh, occurred uh, on Long Island. Second reflection, I believe that Gabby would have been uncomfortable with the attention that she is getting today and over the past several days. I believe she would want Americans more focused on the nine-year-old girl who was killed, on the federal judge who was killed, on the congressional staffer who lost his life, uh, on the others who were killed and wounded. And my final reflection is this. I believe that we should reject the notion that Gabby's colleagues in Congress need to hide from our constituents, that we should reduce our exposure. This is not the time for us to hide from our constituents. This is the time for us to reassert our connection with our constituents. And this isn't the time for us to hide our opinions. Uh, this is a time for us to reassert our opinions, but do it without vilifying one another. There is a way to have opinions without necessarily demeaning one another. We have the right to our opinions, but not be called any more or less of an American with a different opinion. Opinions and the expression of those opinions are the essence of democracy. They are American. And it is fitting that Gabby Giffords on this floor at that podium last week read the First Amendment in the Constitution, which talks about our right to have opinions. We should continue to express those opinions, but do it in a way that would make our children proud of us. Do it in a way that is respectful and tolerant. That is exactly what Gabby Giffords did while she was here, and it was exactly what she will do when she returns. I thank the gentleman. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman's time has expired. Gentleman from California.